Today we have more republics in the world than monarchies. Most people are under the impression that monarchies are non-democratic institutions that got replaced with bastions of freedom, liberty and equality, called republics. 100 years later, we need to ask ourselves, was this the case? In this video we will explore historical misunderstandings, naive expectation that the system will change by itself, bad ways of promoting monarchy today, and three reasons why monarchists are not able to re-establish the monarchy. It used to be that the monarchies were run by absolute monarchs, and republics run by the people and for the people. Why are the monarchies still being measured against the 200-year-old obsolete model, and why are republics given blank check statement that they're all just fine and good. Today, we seem to have more and more tyrannical regimes running republics. Citizens have no basic liberties and can even be imprisoned if they speak against the government narrative. And when it comes to equality in republics, all power and wealth is in hands of small circle of political elite. At the same time, monarchies evolved and experienced a huge change. The head of state is now just there to represent the country, be someone non-dependent on four-year elections while the government is run by democratically elected prime ministers. If you haven't, check out my video on republics and monarchies where I am asking the question, are parliamentary monarchies ideal republics? In the 1990s, the world saw the fall of communist regimes around the world and many expected old monarchies to be re-established in Europe. For example, kingdoms in Hungary, Yugoslavia or Serbia, Albania, Bulgaria and Romania. Monarchies in those countries could have helped with bringing stability as well as prestige and reputation repair, yet nothing happened. In most cases, this was due to the fundamental misunderstanding of what is the parliamentary monarchy by politicians raised in communism. In some cases, pretenders to the thrones were rejecting to be political puppets, seeing themselves being above the politics. Lastly, it was a simple pushback from the communist race political elites in those countries. These elites saw themselves being at the helm and did not want to spend their political capital to give oversight of the country to someone else. Either way, more than 30 years later, monarchies are just a dream of many, while the mentioned republics are either slowly disintegrating back towards the authoritarian regimes, or are deep in corruption and are simply having full authoritarian regimes. Look at the Balkans, for example. Unfortunately, the democratic monarchist alternative was never presented in a clear way that the average citizen can understand. Uncomfortable truth is that major reasons for not re-establishing monarchies lie ultimately with monarchists. Here are some reasons why. Debating that monarchy should be re-established because it is the God's will to have a monarch at helm. Then clinging to the past and on many occasions having these war stories from World War II. And lastly debating who should get the throne. In some countries, monarchists spent all of their energy, who is the right pretender to the throne, in public arena. And now let's check these individually. While some monarchists see will of God or absolute monarchies as good things, in 21st century these concepts are outdated. If you would go to Sweden and ask them to turn their monarchy to how it was 20, 50, 100 or 200 years back, they would reject it, simply because these things evolve with time. And the same goes for endless war stories, lost borders and events that even our grandparents don't quite remember since they were children. Telling people that they would travel back in time and then restart old wars make no sense. Not to mention that three or more generations were born since those events took place. And even if you look at individual monarchies, it may happen that one or two grandparents of the monarchists was on the pro-republican side. Should they start denouncing their grandparents? It is not a realistic expectation. And of course, endless debates who should be on the throne. Should it be a Habsburg or someone new elected 
Kara Georgievich or non-existent Obrenovich dynasty, Bonaparte's or Orleanists. This is something similar to the previous point. This unhealthy debate is basically pushing us even more generations back in time. Just one more way of monarchists working against their common goal. The form of government is a provided service in the end. So ask yourself, when you go to buy a new computer for your business, so you can do some service, do you listen to a seller that is trying to sell you some 20 or 30 year old PC? Of course not. In this video, we explore a question, is North Korea a monarchy or republic? And let me know down in comments, what are your thoughts on reestablishing monarchies? Would monarchies bring stability or instability to post-communist countries? And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.